Today's special optimistic cannabis and corona report is brought to you by Helix Biotrack, the largest seed to sale tracking and dispensary point of sale software solution in the industry. Since 2010, cannabis dispensaries, cultivation facilities, and manufacturers have trusted Biotrack to securely and confidently keep them in compliance while managing their businesses. With flexible solutions for both THC and hemp industries, customizable workflows, built-in machine learning and data analytics that deliver actual insights to the right people at the right time, it's clear why cannabis companies in 37 states and nine countries depend on Biotrack. For comprehensive cannabis software and business solutions that cover the requirements of compliant seed-to-sale tracking and data reporting in every state, there's really only one choice, Biotrack. Go to Biotrack.com today for secure cannabis software solutions that you can count on. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's rewarding emotionally, and it's rewarding at the end when you get to harvest your stash. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's really nice when you you finally you harvest, you dry your buds. You've got these beautiful homegrown buds that you can smoke and share with your friends, and it's it's just your own house label that you can be really proud of. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and today's show is a special optimistic Cannabis and Corona report about cannabis opportunities during the global COVID-19 crisis. Today on Cannabis and Corona, we have another cannabis entrepreneur whose company is thriving during the COVID-19 crisis, Jason Levin, the founder of A Pot for a Pot. Jason, thanks for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad to meet you. We had your partner as a guest on the Raising Cannabis Capital podcast a couple of years ago. And I remember just being so impressed with your business concept. And I just, I just knew you guys were going to kill this. For our listeners, can you tell us about A Pot for a Pot? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, apotforpot.com is the complete kit to grow cannabis at home like any other houseplant. Uh, we make it really easy and provide everything that you need in one complete box uh, to go from seed to harvest in 80 days, right on your windowsill or your desk or your balcony or in your home garden. Oh, my gosh. I said this when, we, when Joshua was on the show. It's got that why didn't I think of it factor. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said this, that the home hobbyist and the do-it-yourself cannabis crafter, I think that's going to be the next big thing. Are you seeing mm-hmm. that happening? Yeah, I think that we are. I think that as cannabis becomes more mainstream uh, and all of these commercial licensed grows are coming together and really professionalizing, we're seeing that sort of middle tier of the market that somebody who wanted to blow out their garage or their second bedroom sort of fading away because they can't get a license, they can't sell the dispensary, they don't have the demand from their local community if they wanted to do it on the black market. And so you're seeing either big commercial grows or you're seeing small hobbyist grows for personal use. And the market is sort of dividing to those two ends of the extreme now. Yeah, almost like people make beer at home and people make wine at home. I think it's mm-hmm. I think people take a lot of pride in, in this process. And, and it, with cannabis, growing is you know an art in itself. So I think, think it's a, there's a lot of attraction to that. Oh, for sure. So many of our customers get so attached to their plants. They send us photos, they name them, they nurture <laughs> them, especially in times like these. If you don't have a pet, it's just something to take care of, something that's alive, that you're responsible for, that lets you feel connected to the earth and to the seasons and grounded. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, you mentioned the this times when we're in the midst, the midst of this coronavirus. And has it accelerated the interest in growing cannabis at home? Have you seen a surge in sales? You know, that's a great question. We have seen a surge in sales, and I'm sure that part of it, although I can't say what percentage, is due to you know the coronavirus situation that's going on. I'm sure part of it is due to the fact that it's springtime, and so it is a popular time to be growing. And part of it is the fact that everybody's cooped up in their houses on the internet all day. Yeah. I think there's so many people doing puzzles and all the different kind of hobbies, and this is a great hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's rewarding emotionally, and it's rewarding at the end when you get to harvest your stash. 
it's really nice when you harvest, you dry your buds, you've got these beautiful homegrown buds that you can smoke and share with your friends, and it's, it's just your own house label that you can be really proud of. Yeah, and I'm sure one of the reasons why you're doing so well is that you make it super easy for a new cannabis customer. I mean, a pot for a pot.com, you get the starter kit and it's not very much. It's like 40 bucks and you, with shipping included, you have everything you need pretty much to grow. What is it? Like eight ounces in 80 days. So up to eight ounces. Yeah. With our five gallon kit, Okay, uh, our prices range from about 35 bucks up to past a hundred dollars, depending on what size you want to get, whether you're getting the complete kit or the expansion kit that can all make a bit of a difference, but everybody gets a harvest. I would say across all of our kits, our customers average between two to three ounces of yield in less than three months. But if you take the five gallon kit, stick it under some grow lights and just blast it with light. Oh yeah. You'll get seven to eight ounces. (laughs) And you teach them how to do it. It's not like they're just like here, have at it. You give them the the instructions and especially for people. Definitely. You know, it's not like here's a box of, of goods, figure out how to put it together. It's our typical customer has never grown before, or maybe they've grown before, but they want to try soil growing for the first time. And so we sort of approach it as I've never gardened before in my life. I have a black thumb. I don't know what I'm doing. Teach me. And so we give them step-by-step instructions with illustrations. And then we also provide 24-7 online support. So if there's a question or your plant's doing something weird or you're a little concerned, we have customers every day that take photos and videos. They send them to us and we build a relationship that way. We give advice and we give coaching. And there's always somebody at the other end of, of that email or that live chat to sort of help you along. That is so much fun. I, I can just see why this is just, I mean, I knew it was a good idea when you first did it, but it's, it's even a better idea today. I want to take a short break to let you listen to a quick preview of our next episode. We don't believe that cannabis is an industry. And the reason is, is because we believe that cannabis and cannabis derived products will be in every home period and that it's a macro global trend, not a cycle. As such, with any economy, there are sectors and subsectors and industries within those. One of the things that we try to inoculate is get out of this conversation around the cannabis industry because it creates a wedge between the entrepreneurs and the investors in our experience. Tune in on Sunday to hear Ross O'Brien from Bonaventure Equity. And now let's get back to today's show. With all this rapid growth, will you be raising capital to to grow or to expand? Potentially. We're not raising capital at the moment. At the moment, we are just chugging along shipping units, but that's definitely something that we might look at later in the year. Keep us in mind if you do. As, as, uh, definitely. Yeah. As far as, as far as the process of shipping everything out, you, you sparked a thought. Have you had to make some changes within your organization to, you know, to protect everybody and to protect your employees? Uh, you know, what we've done is we've definitely shifted the working schedule in the warehouse to be later in the day because we're in a large complex. Uh, mm. We interact a little bit less with the other warehouses that are on the premises. But besides that, I guess maybe for some of our assembly line work and some of our fulfillment stuff, we've brought people in that we already have regular contact with so that we're not having strangers come to the facility or putting anybody at risk. Mm -hmm. But besides that, things have stayed pretty normal. It's mostly Josh and me in the warehouse and at the office most of the time. And that hasn't changed too much. Okay. When somebody places an order, is the shipping time about the same as it was before? Or are we seeing a slowdown in the shipping time as well? So I've seen a little bit of a slowdown the past few weeks from the carriers. We usually get stuff packed and processed in less than 24 hours from when the order's placed. And then it's picked up by the carrier the next day. Uh, but I have seen a bit of a slowdown with UPS and USPS. Okay. Well, we've been speaking with Jason Levin, who's the founder of A Pot for a Pot, and we'll have all the information in the show notes and at mjbulls.com. But if you're, it's a great hobby for people that are cooped up right now, locked in your house, going crazy. It's a pot for a pot.com. Super simple. Jason, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. This has been great. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com. Today's podcast was produced by MJ Bulls Media, the industry's premier cannabis podcast network, with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. 
I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast. 